Good morning, good morning. How everybody doing? Oh, good. Uh, first and foremost, just kind of want to hit on the um, the Demar Hamlin deal, just because it's very triggering. It's been very triggering for me, just because uh, my father actually went into cardiac arrest right right before he was about to get double lung transplant surgery. And so when I saw that kind of take place, it was just a very triggering moment for me, kind of been weighing heavy on my heart. Uh, just seeing some of the great news that just, just came out on, on him being awake and alert and no neurological damage is a... Uh, it's a miracle in itself and can't say how much, you know, been praying for him and his family and everything that they're going through. I, I, I have, I'm not, I can't say that I can only imagine because I can't imagine uh, what's that like. And so just to see the progress that he's having, he's moving in the right direction is, is a true blessing as we continue to keep him and his family in our prayers. Uh, I ask that you all do the same. Um, but man, what what a blessing that is! Uh, you know, just real quick going, just looking over the game. Uh, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Uh, Metellus again, part, starting off the game right there in the first quarter. He gets a, a his second block in back to back weeks. I think the media told me that's first player to do it since like 1995, which is incredible. And you know, you really look at that play. It's an unbelievable job of execution at the end of the day uh, by the guys. That's a rush that we've been working and practicing now. I don't know, for three or four weeks and really had never had the true opportunity to run it. And uh, when we finally got the opportunity to do it, well-executed play, uh, Mattel is just trusting and believing it. Patrick Jones doing an unbelievable job. DJ Wong, I mean, really the, the entire unit uh, just did a great job of executing right there. We're able to make a game-changing play. And, and, uh, and, and then you, you kind of look at it, you know, right after that, where we always, you know, preach about, you know, staying neutral, never getting too high, never getting too low, just kind of staying even kill, uh, you know, we end up having to kick off right there and then getting cribbed on for 105, which is, you know, very disappointing, inexcusable, uh, not our brand of football. And, uh, you know, as you look at it, when you start talking about special teams play and what our role is on the team, and it's either going into a game, you either want to come out neutral or you want to come out basically winning that phase of the game. You never want to be on the negative side of it because of the impact that it has on a football game. And so, you know, you can look at it. We get the block punt, come away with three points. They get one, take one to the crib bonus. I would say that we came out on the negative side of that. And as a result, you know, it, that kind of played a factor in how the football game ended up going. Uh, and so, you know, moving forward, we just got to find a way to, to stay consistent at the end of the day and minimize those explosive type of special teams uh, plays that do happen. We're capable of it. You know, we've been doing it all season. And, you know, so we, we just, at the end of the day, we just got to get back to us, guys can't start trying to press or feel like they have to go beyond themselves. Or just be you. Um, at the end of the day, we just got to execute at a much higher level than, than what we're doing. How does your experience as a former player inform the way you talk to your guys about Demar Hamlin and just that situation? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's a good question, and, and it's a. Um, it's tough because, you know, we, we play this game and, and, you know, we understand the risk that, that comes with it, but you never experience it or see it at that type of magnitude at which it took place. And, you know, you look at the probabilities of something like that happen is, you know, you, you, you got, you're more likely to win the Powerball three times and something like that to happen. And so, you know, you just try to communicate to those guys. The NFL did an unbelievable job of having on-site medical staff immediately there and available, ready to uh, provide the uh, the necessary health and operation that he needed to give him get to even give him an opportunity to be where he's at now. And so, you know, I go through with the guys on, you know, proper protocols, you know, the, we're doing all the right things we can to prepare to protect you guys as you look at how the rules of the game are changing, where we're trying to protect the quarterback more, we're trying to protect players more, we're getting rid of blindside blocks and, you know, hits to the head and neck area. So we're doing all the necessary things we need to do to basically keep a very violent game, all right, as safe as possible. Have you um, talked to the players? You said it's great that, it, that there's, well, I think other people said it, that there's the support staff here to help mentally but you said you were triggered you know other players might be triggered do you talk to um some uh, of the guys or how do you handle that yeah, yeah. absolutely uh you know myself i've i've uh 
you know, when it's sought therapy as well, just because, you know, when an event like that does take place, it, it does hold a certain place in your heart and your mind and it sits heavily on it. And, you know, it's not easy to go through, but that's why you always lean on. That's why we do have an unbelievable support staff. We've got unbelievable teammates. Um, the medical staff has been unbelievable. And, you know, that's the best thing about this business is that you have an unlimited amount of resources at right within your, your, your grasp that you're able to go to and connect to. Uh, you know, everybody's always looking out for one another's well-being to make sure that we are in a true, good, stable mindset in order to go out and obviously do our job. But, you know, even from a personal level as well. You did that this week? Uh, mm -hmm. not, not this week. So I actually, yes, this week, yes. Oh. Yes, Based this week. Tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, as a former player, I mean, obviously, I think everybody, all players know that you risk serious, serious injury whenever you're out there. But does that, is it also hit people's consciousness that you are risking beyond just really serious? You know, like yeah. That it, it I, I, potentially be life-threatening yeah you see I don't I'm not so sure I know I know for myself when I was playing this game I, I never feared for my life yeah. you know I, I never thought I never considered the game to be life-threatening you know they always say that that this game is a hundred percent chance of injury just because as soon as you step on the field you're not going to feel the exact same yeah. you know as you did when you step off of it whether it's a, a hamstring a little tight or I got a little achiness here or there you know the severity of the injuries you know, stretch a mile wide, but never do you consider that it's, it's a life-threatening type of deal, you know. Yeah, I think the, the wor at worst case, you're thinking more so of, uh, you know, you know, going, getting paralyzed or something like that, breaking my neck, you know, more head, neck, concussion type of injuries. But never do you think to it, it's the magnitude of, of, you know, possibly losing your life playing a game of football. And you think that players, I mean, can't speak for other guys, I guess, but do you think that that's a possibility that will be in people's minds moving forward? Yeah, you know, again, the the probability of an action like that happening is so far and in between and rare. I mean, everybody across the world can say that, you know, we've never seen anything like this before. And the game of football has been played for over 70 years. And so you, you, you look at it and quite naturally it's going to be in the back of guys' minds. But it's also kind of a, you know, you look at the probability of it, maybe that gives you a little bit of, I don't know, uh, Peace of mind, you know, I guess maybe just because of I, what what the odds are of something like that happening. I mean, everything has to go right, you know, to, to the heartbeat and, you know, the action of the hit, where he gets hit at and all that kind of stuff. So I, it's, it's hard to say, but it's, it's hard to say that it won't be, you know. You talked about the, the pole block and running um, that play that, that you guys decided to put in. What what? I guess, do you see in that moment where that is the play you guys choose to run? Well, you know, you go you, going into a game, Alex, you always kind of have a, a good idea of, like a, it's like a play call sheet basically of down the distances, where you're at on the field, what hash the ball is on. And so it's a lot of intricate details that go into making certain pressure calls in certain situations, you know, the flow of the game, you know, is this a possibility where these guys might possibly want to think about running a fake? Where's the area of the field at? Um, certain tendencies that they have, especially on where they want to punt the football. And so it's a, it's a lot of intricate details that go into it. And we just maximize the opportunity that we had. Defense did a great job. Uh, it was kind of a backed up, you know, minus 30 type of territory right there for us to feel good about it. You know, the distance, the distance provided us with an opportunity to rush it. And so with with that, uh, you know, of the culmination of all those things, you know, guys did an unbelievable job of, uh, of executing at the end of the day. And so, you know, it's on us. We just got to stay consistent in our play. And, you know, it's, it's not like we haven't, you know, done that or, or made these all these type of plays. Uh, you know, it's just about consistency at the end of the day. And, you know, we always bounce back. Whenever we get punched in the mouth, we always find a way to bounce back the following week. And, and I have no no doubt that we'll do that. Going up against a tough division opponent in the um, in the Chicago Bears, who's got you know really really good returners on both ends at the punt return spot and the kick return spot, and we want to start trending in the right direction as we get ready to head into the big dance. Did you see anything on Greg's missed kicks that concerned you, or were they just missing? Nah, so yeah, that was um, it was really more of an overcorrection. So going into it, uh, he actually ended up having a great warm up. 
you know, I say that uh, just, you know, but also, you know, a warm-up isn't really indicative of how the game will go. I've seen guys have terrible warm-ups and go perfect in the game or have great warm-ups. But he was able to get a really good feel for how the wind was going, uh, the conditions. And so with that, he kind of pushed the ball right, thinking it was, was going to draw back in, and it ended up staying right on that. And then he basically on the second one, he tried to overcorrect, and he ended up hooking it. Yeah. On their kickoff return, I mean, you mentioned maybe guys pressing a little bit. Is that something you saw where maybe they're trying to do too much and kind of vacating lanes a little yeah, bit? Yeah, well, yeah, it was just it was just bad ball all around, man. Uh, guys, and, and, the, and the tough part about it is, is that we're going to a week we're prepared the right way. There was nothing, you know, crazy that Green Bay did. It was exact return we expected to do. They blocked it up exactly the way we practiced it. And, you know, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to say what it is, uh, why guys did what they did. Uh, but, you know, it was a direct result. And, and as a result, we ended up paying for it right there. And so, yeah, I, th I think, you know, sometimes where certain guys feel like they need to be making plays or feel like they're in position to make plays and not making it start to press a little bit, start trying to just do too much at the end of the day. And we have enough talent on this football field and, and enough talent on this unit to where everybody's going to get an opportunity to eat so long as you just do your job at the end of the day. So long as we do our job and we execute, we'll always like the end result. Matt, when it comes to guiding your players kind of through this uh, DeMar Hamlin situation, I mean, how does it uh, help that you've been able to cultivate relationships with them kind of on a personal level from day one that that's been a priority of yours Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely been a priority of mine. And so it's you know I can go to a guy like Patrick Jones who has a relationship with this guy and sit down and talk to him and if if I can offer him anything, then I'll do that. If you need a little time away from the meeting room, I'll provide you with that. And I think it's important, uh, and that's the exact reason why you do build those relationships. That's the exact reason why you do get to know your players, because you get a better idea of who's really triggered by this type of stuff, whereas who might be, might this player, Patrick Jones, might be able to go lean on a CJ Ham, where I can go to CJ Ham, who I know has a good relationship with Patrick Jones, like, hey man, you know, Make sure we kind of put an arm around P. Jones. He's going through this right here. And so now you start talking about relying on others, relying on your teammates. And, you know, our culture is building on that connection and chemistry. And during times like this, you know, myself included, is, is when I can lean on my support staff, I can lean on my players to provide me with the support that I need to help me get through this mentally.